Welcome to the Quick Pro Camera Guide for the Sony Alpha 58. This is a great camera that will capture amazing images as well as HD video. We hope you'll enjoy learning more about it with this guide. Periodically during this guide, you will see symbols appear at the lower part of your screen. This symbol will be shown when a warning is being given, and this symbol will be shown when a helpful tip is being given. This guide is meant to be a study tool to be used in connection with and not a replacement of your camera's owner's manual. You can watch it entirely in one sitting or by chapter. Let's get started. Your A58 has many sophisticated buttons and dials, and to take the best pictures with your camera, you want to be familiar with the functions of each of them. Let's begin with a brief overview of many of the camera's buttons and features. Many of the things we'll discuss in this chapter are discussed in greater detail later in this guide. First, there is the shutter button and power switch. To take a picture, simply rotate the switch to the on position. Press and hold the shutter button halfway down for a moment, allow the camera to focus, and press it the rest of the way down to take the picture. This is the control dial. In many of the camera's shooting modes, you can make adjustments to the shooting settings with the control dial. This is the zoom button. Pressing this button will allow you to digitally zoom in without the use of the zoom ring on the lens. To use the zoom feature, press the zoom button once to activate the zoom. Then you can use the top, bottom, and sides of the control button to zoom in on the subject. Then take the picture. The image will be recorded at the level of zoom that you selected. This is the ISO button, which provides fast and easy access to the camera's ISO settings. Here is the Finder LCD button. By default, your camera will always be in the live view screen mode, meaning the scene will be displayed on the LCD. To switch the screen mode between the LCD and the electronic viewfinder, you can press the Finder LCD button. Also note that when these IP sensors are covered, like when the camera is brought close to the face, the view will be automatically switched from the LCD to the electronic viewfinder. This is the pop-up flash. Here is the microphone. Take care not to cover the microphone in movie recording. This is the accessory shoe which you can use to attach optional flash units and other accessories to the camera. This is the mode dial, which allows you to choose the camera's shooting mode. By rotating the mode dial, you can tell the camera what exposure settings to use. When you choose any of the modes in this section of the dial, the camera will do all of the work for you, and all you'll need to do is point and shoot. These modes include the superior auto, intelligent auto, flash off, scene, Sweep Panorama, Picture Effect, and Telezoom Continuous Advanced Priority. This section of the mode dial has the manual modes. When you use the manual modes, you'll choose many of the camera's settings. These modes are more advanced, but with a little practice, you can produce amazing results. These modes include Program Auto, Aperture Priority, Shutter Priority, and Manual. There's also a movie mode on the A58's mode dial. When the camera is used in this mode, you will be able to record movies with adjusted exposure settings. Now let's take a look at this side of the camera. Here we'll find the flash button. Pressing this button will make the camera's built-in flash pop up in the manual modes. The flash will pop up and fire automatically in many of the camera's automatic and scene modes. This is the lens release button. To attach a lens, make sure that the camera is switched to off. Hold the camera in one hand and the lens in the other like this. Align the lens's index with the camera's index. Then gently rotate the lens until it clicks into place. When you want to remove a lens, press the lens release button while holding the camera with the same hand, and then with the other hand, rotate the lens until it uncouples. Take great care not to scratch the lens by allowing it to make contact with anything. When you need to clean your lens, it's a good idea to use a lens cloth. Other fabrics can dull or scratch your lens. Avoid changing lenses in windy or dusty conditions. This will help the image sensor stay clean and free of dust. This is the focus mode switch, 
which will allow you to select either autofocus or manual focus. These are the terminal covers. Each terminal will allow you to connect the camera to a different device. This terminal is the microphone terminal, which will allow you to connect the camera to an external microphone for movie recording. This is the mini HDMI terminal, which will allow you to connect the camera to an HD television. Here is the multi-terminal, which will allow you to connect the camera to a variety of devices, including a computer using a USB cable. This is the DC-in terminal, which will allow you to connect the camera to an external power source using an AC adapter. On this side of the camera, there is the memory card slot cover. Your Sony A58 can use SD memory cards as well as Memory Stick Pro Duo memory cards. When you're inserting an SD memory card, you'll want to make sure that the manufacturer's logo is facing the back of the camera. For Memory Stick Pro Duo cards, the manufacturer's logo will face the front of the camera. Simply insert the card until it clicks into place and close the card slot cover. Do not force the card. If the card does not click into place easily, check to see that it is positioned correctly. Before you start taking pictures with a new memory card, it's a good idea to format it. Also keep in mind that your camera will operate faster if you periodically format your memory card rather than simply deleting images from it to free up space for more picture taking. Make sure that you don't format your memory card unless you have already copied the images that you want to save to your computer. Formatting your card will erase all the images. To format a memory card, press the menu button. Then use the control button to scroll to the memory card tool menu. The first menu item is format. Press the center control button, also the AF button, to select it. The camera will prompt you with a warning. Select enter and the memory card will be formatted. Now let's take a look at the back of the camera. The most prominent feature is the tiltable LCD screen. When pivoting or tilting the LCD monitor, note that it will pivot and tilt in specific directions and forcing the monitor in a direction other than intended may cause damage. This screen serves several purposes. First, it provides you with a full-time live view of the scene. Next, it displays the images that have been taken in the playback mode. Using the camera's control buttons, you can scroll through the images on the memory card. The LCD also provides fast and easy access to the camera's menu system and all of the shooting settings. This is the menu button, which provides access to the camera's sophisticated menu system. This is the movie recording button. To record a movie, simply press the shutter button halfway down to focus, and then press the movie recording button. To end recording, simply press the movie recording button again. This button has two functions. First, it is the zoom out thumbnail button in playback mode. It is also the auto exposure lock button. You can use this button when you're taking pictures into the sun or near a window to ensure that the subject will not be too dark or too bright. This button has three functions. First, it is the exposure compensation button. In the camera's program auto, aperture priority, and shutter priority modes, you can press and hold this button while rotating the control dial to adjust the overall brightness of the image. If you place the exposure compensation cursor at the plus side of the scale, the image will be brighter. And if you place the cursor toward the minus side, the image will be darker. After you have taken the photo, you'll want to be sure to set the exposure compensation back to zero. button is the image rotation button. To rotate an image on the LCD, press the image rotation button and press the center control button once or multiple times to rotate the image. To exit image rotation, press the button again. As discussed, this is the control button, which is used to navigate to different settings and options on the LCD. Each section has its own function. The top of the control button is the display button and is used to control which information is displayed on the LCD and in the viewfinder. Each time it's pressed, a different set of information will appear on the LCD and in the electronic viewfinder. The left side of the control button is used to set the drive mode. The drive modes determine how many times the shutter releases when you press the shutter button. The A58 has single shooting, 
continuous high and low speed, a 10 second and 2 second self timer, and several bracketing options that are available in the camera's P, A, S, and M shooting modes. The bottom of the control button provides access to the camera's picture effects. There are a variety of different picture effects that will allow you more creativity with your images. We'll discuss these effects in greater detail later in this guide. The right side of the control button provides access to the camera's white balance settings. Note that these settings are not available in certain shooting modes. The center control button has two purposes. First, it serves as the enter button to confirm selections in the menu system and to other shooting settings. Second, it is the AF button and the object tracking button, which allows you to continuously focus on a moving subject. This is the playback button which allows you to view the images and movies that have been recorded on the camera's memory card. This is the in-camera guide button, which will display shooting tips for the selected shooting mode. It also serves as the delete button in the camera's playback mode to delete images and movies from the memory card. which means that not all of the image data is actually saved. Because they're compressed, JPEGs are much smaller in file size. JPEGs have a more narrow range of shadows and highlights, and will lose some image data each time they're edited. Finally, JPEG files are processed by your camera and are able to be printed directly from the memory card. Because JPEG images require less time when editing on the computer, I use a high quality JPEG setting for everyday picture taking and snapshots. If I know ahead of time that I'm going to be extensively editing my images, I'll choose the RAW plus JPEG format. Let's take a look now at how to choose the image size and quality settings on the A58. First, we'll press the menu button and make sure that we're in the first recording menu indicated by a camera icon with the number 1 highlighted. The top option, image size, is where you can choose the number of megapixels you'd like the camera to use when recording images. The first option, large, will use all 20 megapixels. The second option, medium, will use 10 megapixels. And the last option, small, will record the images using 5 megapixels. Unless I know that I will only be using the images for email or posting online, I like to keep the camera set to the large 20 megapixel setting. Below the image size option, there is the aspect ratio with two options. First, there is the 3-2 option. This is the size to use if you would like to make 4x6 prints of your photos. The other option, 16-9, is the same aspect ratio as a widescreen movie. Use this size if you want your images to match the aspect ratio of widescreen movies. Let's take a look at the image quality options. There are four different options. First, there is RAW. With this setting, the camera will record one RAW file. The next option, RAW and JPEG, will record a RAW file in addition to a JPEG file. There are also two JPEG options, Fine and Standard. The difference between the two JPEG options is the level of compression. The fine option will have the least amount of compression and produce a higher quality image. The standard option will have more compression, slightly lower quality, and smaller file sizes.
Your camera features a variety of shooting modes, ranging from fully automatic to completely manual. This gives you a lot of flexibility and creative control over your photos. Let's discuss the camera's automatic, flash off, scene, sweep, and continuous advanced priority modes now. With each of these modes, the camera will adjust all of the settings for you, and all you'll need to do is point and shoot. Note that we'll discuss the picture effects modes in detail in Chapter 8 of this guide. There are two automatic modes on the A58, Superior Auto and Intelligent Auto. With both of these modes, the camera will make adjustments for the brightness and color of the photo automatically. The Superior Auto mode is different from the Intelligent Auto mode because it will quickly assess a scene and then switch to an appropriate scene mode to take the picture. The Flash Off mode functions in the same way as the automatic modes, except the flash will not fire regardless of lighting conditions. Use this mode in places where using a flash is not appropriate. Now let's discuss the camera's scene modes. To access the scene modes, rotate the mode dial to the scene mode setting and press the center control button to view the options. The other way to view the scene mode options is by pressing the function button and selecting scene selection. There is a scene mode available for almost any shooting scenario, including portrait, sports action, macro, landscape, sunset, night scene, handheld twilight, and night portrait. When you recognize one of these environments, simply choose from the scene selection menu and the camera will optimize the necessary settings. Let's talk a little about each of these modes. First, there is the portrait mode. This will help you emphasize a subject by blurring the background. It also reproduces soft skin tones. Make sure you focus on the subject's eyes for the best results. Next is the sports action mode. This shoots fast motion at higher shutter speeds. If you hold down the shutter button, the camera will continue taking pictures one after another until you release the button. This mode works best with well-lit scenes, as insufficient light will not allow high shutter speeds. The next mode is the macro mode. This is great for close-ups of small objects that are physically close to the lens. Use this to capture subjects such as flowers and food in clear sharp focus. When shooting at distances of less than 9 inches, using a macro lens may be necessary. The landscape mode captures the entire range of scenery in sharp focus with vivid color. Shooting with your lens set to wide angle will increase the sense of vastness of the scenery. You'll also want to make sure to keep the camera level when you're shooting landscape images. The sunset mode allows you to vividly and dramatically capture the warm colors of dusk and dawn. This mode is also great for capturing silhouettes. Shutter speeds may be slow in this mode, so you might consider using a tripod. The night scene mode is great for capturing nighttime scenes without losing the dark atmosphere. In this mode, the shutter speed may be slow, and the use of a tripod will help avoid blur due to camera shake. You'll also want to make sure that the camera is level when you're photographing landscapes or similar scenes. The next mode is the handheld twilight mode. Use this mode when you take pictures at night without using a tripod, and you'll still get impressive results. Use this mode for stationary subjects or scenes. The handheld twilight mode takes a burst of shots and then combines the shots to create one image with reduced blur, camera shake, and noise. Keep the camera as still as possible during the continuous shooting. Please note that after the shots are taken, there will be a delay while the camera processes and combines the images. The last scene mode is Night Portrait, which is great for capturing images of people in nighttime scenes. In this mode, the flash will fire to expose the subject, and the shutter will remain open for a longer period of time to properly expose the background. The next shooting mode on the mode dial is the Sweep Panorama mode. To use this mode, simply rotate the mode dial to the Sweep Panorama icon and press the center control button to confirm that you'd like to use the sweep panorama mode. Now the camera will prompt you to take the shot. Hold the camera steady, press the shutter button halfway down to set focus and exposure, and then press the shutter button down the rest of the way as you slowly move the camera in the direction of the arrow. As you're moving the camera, you will hear it take multiple shots at very high speed. 
In this mode, it's important to make sure that you follow the direction of the arrow and move the camera at a slow, consistent speed. Otherwise, the camera will be unable to shoot the panorama and will prompt you with an error message. The camera will seamlessly stitch all of the images together to create a single panoramic image. Note that it will take the camera a few moments to process the image. There are a few more things that we should discuss about the sweep shooting mode. The panorama image size and the panorama direction. To make adjustments to these settings, make sure that the mode dial is set to the sweep panorama mode and then press the menu button. Here, make sure that you're on the first recording menu. Use the center control button to select the panorama size option. You can select standard or wide. The next menu item is the panorama direction. This is the setting that controls the direction of the arrow when shooting a panorama. You can choose from right, left, up, or down. Now let's take a minute to talk about the A58's Telezoom Continuous Advanced Priority Mode. With this mode, you'll have the ability to capture very fast-moving subjects with amazingly crisp focus. The Continuous Advanced Priority Mode can capture images at up to 8 frames per second. To operate the camera in this mode, rotate the mode dial to the Continuous Advanced Priority icon. Now all you need to do is press the shutter button halfway down to focus and the rest of the way down to take the picture. The camera will continue to take pictures as long as the shutter button is held down. To make sure that the focus will be adjusted during shooting, you'll want to make sure that the focus mode is set to continuous. To do this, simply press the function button and navigate to the auto focus mode. Rotate the control dial to select continuous AF. One of the most important concepts in photography is exposure, or the amount of light that falls on the camera's image sensor or film. A properly exposed photo will have good detail in the shadow, mid-tone, and highlight areas. Photos that are too bright are overexposed, and photos that are too dark are underexposed. There are three ways that your A58 measures light. These are the camera's metering modes. Note that the metering modes are available only in certain shooting modes. To access the camera's metering modes, make sure that the mode dial is set to the PASM Continuous Advance or Sweep Panorama. Note that you can also set the metering mode in the camera's movie mode. Now we'll simply press the function button and use the control button to navigate to the metering mode option. The first metering mode is called multi-segment metering. This is a great general metering mode that can be used in most shooting scenarios. When this mode is selected, the camera will divide the scene into zones. Then the camera measures the shadows and highlights in each zone and averages all the zones. Then the camera uses that average to set the exposure automatically to suit the scene. This is a good mode to use for many situations. But sometimes the scene is very bright or very dark and you may want to use a different metering mode. The next mode is center weighted metering. Center weighted metering functions much like multi-segment metering, with zones being evaluated and averaged, but with center weighted metering, the zones that are in the center area of the frame are given the greatest weight. The zones that are outside of the center area of the frame are taken into account as well, but these zones are given much less priority when determining the exposure. Center weighted metering is a classic mode used for portraits. The last metering mode is spot metering. Spot metering functions in much the same way as center weighted metering, but spot metering uses only a very small area of the frame to determine proper exposure. Spot metering is a great mode to use when there is a lot of contrast between the background and the subject, when the background is either very bright or very dark. Now that you know a little about how your camera sees and measures light to create properly exposed photos, let's talk a little about the advanced shooting modes on the A58. These modes allow you to take the most creative control over your camera's settings, like aperture, shutter speed, ISO, white balance, flash, as well as a variety of other settings. The first mode we'll talk about is called Program Auto and is represented with a P on the mode dial. In this mode, the camera automatically adjusts shutter speed and aperture for optimal exposure. This may seem similar to auto modes, 
But with the program auto mode, you have control over the camera's aperture, shutter speed, focus mode, drive mode, and built-in flash settings. To operate in this mode, rotate the mode dial to P. You can monitor exposure settings like the aperture and shutter speed at the bottom of the LCD or viewfinder. Taking a picture in this mode is easy. Simply hold the shutter button halfway down to focus, then press the shutter button all the way down to take the picture. You may find that the shutter speed is too slow for what you're photographing, or that the aperture does not give you the depth of field that you're looking for. If you'd like to change the camera's shutter speed and aperture combination, simply rotate the control dial. If the image is too bright or too dark, you can adjust the exposure compensation by pressing the exposure compensation button and rotating the control dial. Values with a minus sign will make the image darker, and values with a plus sign will make the image brighter. The next setting on the mode dial is the A or Aperture Priority Mode. The Aperture Priority Mode is useful for times when you want to control the depth of field in an image. Depth of field is the term used to describe the distance between the nearest and farthest objects in a scene that appear acceptably sharp in an image. When only a small area or subject in an image is in focus, it's said to have a shallow depth of field. This effect is achieved by using a smaller f-stop number. When everything in both the foreground and background is in focus, an image is said to have a long depth of field. For a long depth of field, choose a large f-stop number. When you're shooting in aperture priority mode, you'll set the aperture and the camera will automatically select the correct shutter speed for proper exposure. To use this mode, set the mode dial to A. Rotate the control dial to select the aperture value as you watch the display on the LCD. Press the shutter button halfway to focus and the rest of the way to take the picture. The next setting on the mode dial is the S or shutter priority mode. The shutter priority mode is useful for times when you want to control motion in the scene, whether it's freezing action or blurring a moving subject. In this mode, you'll set the shutter speed and the camera will automatically select an appropriate aperture value for proper exposure. To use the camera in shutter priority mode, set the mode dial to S and rotate the control dial to set the shutter speed. The Sony A58 has shutter speeds that range from very slow, 30 full seconds, to very fast, 1 4,000th of a second. You can view the shutter speed and aperture values on the LCD or in the electronic viewfinder. The next shooting mode is the manual or M mode. This mode gives you complete control of the camera. In manual mode, you will set both the shutter speed and aperture to create the exposure. To operate the camera in manual mode, rotate the mode dial to M. To set the shutter speed, rotate the control dial. To set the aperture, press and hold the aperture button, also the exposure compensation button, while rotating the control dial. To monitor the exposure on the LCD, you'll want to watch the number next to the small MM icon, which indicates how close the image is to proper exposure. Proper exposure is indicated by a plus minus zero value. You can choose just the right aperture and shutter speed combination for your scene, whether you want to freeze action or create a very shallow depth of field. Make the necessary adjustments to the aperture and shutter speed so that the exposure level indicator is near zero. Then, press the shutter button halfway down to focus and the rest of the way down to take the picture. In addition to aperture and shutter speed, the camera's ISO setting will have a significant impact on whether your images are properly exposed. The ISO setting affects the image sensor's sensitivity to light. The higher the number, the less light that is required to properly expose the image sensor. You can either have the camera automatically choose the sensitivity, or you can set it manually. Here's how to set the ISO on the A58. Press the ISO button to bring up the ISO speed options on the camera's LCD monitor. Use the control button or the control dial to select the ISO setting you'd like. There is an auto ISO setting, and you can also choose from ISOs ranging from 100 to 16,000. It's a good idea to set the ISO speed to suit the ambient light setting that you're shooting in. When you increase the ISO speed, a higher number, for low light, a fast shutter speed can be used to avoid blurry images. Keep in mind that a higher ISO setting may introduce noise or grain into your images. 
An ISO setting that is too high for the shooting conditions will make the image lose quality, and you might start to see particles in your picture. To help keep digital noise to a minimum, the Sony A58 has an impressive multi-frame noise reduction ISO option. To choose the ISO setting within multi-frame noise reduction, press the ISO button to view the ISO options, scroll to the multi-frame noise reduction option, and press the right side of the control button. Now simply use the top and bottom of the control button to select the ISO setting. When this option is used, the camera will take several shots at very high speed and combine them for a final image with significantly reduced noise. Now that we've discussed shooting modes and ISO settings, let's take a minute to talk about the A58's drive modes. The drive modes determine how many times the shutter releases when the shutter button is pressed. To access the drive modes, press the drive mode button. You can use the control button to select the drive mode you'd like. The first drive mode is single shooting. In this mode, the camera will take one picture each time the shutter button is pressed completely. The next drive mode is continuous shooting, with options for high and low. When the camera is set to use the continuous shooting drive mode, the camera will continuously take pictures while the shutter button is held down. The next drive mode is the self-timer, with options for 10 seconds and 2 seconds. When this drive mode is selected, the camera will take the picture either 10 seconds or 2 seconds after the shutter button is pressed completely. The next three drive modes are the camera's bracketing modes. Using these modes, you can take single shot bracketed images, continuous bracketed images, and white balance bracketed images. Experiment with ISO settings to become more familiar with their range and control. Here's a guide that will help you have a basic idea of what ISO setting to use in various situations. When you're outdoors in full sun, use ISO 100 to 200. In the shade on an overcast day or indoors with lots of window light, use ISO 400. ISOs 800 and higher should be used indoors for action shots or in other low light conditions. The A58 is equipped with Sony's translucent mirror technology, which allows the camera to offer full-time live view with incredible focusing speed and accuracy. Let's take a few moments to learn about the options that are displayed on the camera's LCD as well as the camera's movie mode and movie settings. First, let's discuss the display on the LCD. Note that these settings may vary depending on the shooting mode that you have selected. In the graphic display, which is also the default screen, several important shooting settings are displayed on the bottom of the screen. First, the shutter speed and aperture are displayed. Next, there is the exposure compensation indicator and the ISO setting. Above that, you'll find the aperture indicator and the shutter speed indicator. The aperture and shutter speed indicators provide a visual guide to help you remember which aperture values and shutter speeds will provide specific results. This icon indicates that the lock-on focus is active. At the top left corner of the screen, the shooting mode will be displayed. Next, you will see the memory card indicator with the number of shots remaining. Next, the aspect ratio, image size, image quality, and movie record settings are displayed. At the top right corner of the display, you'll see the battery remaining icon as well as the percentage. To view the display all information screen, simply press the display button. And to minimize the information that is displayed, press the display button again to see the recording information off view. Let's take a look at each of the options that are available on the LCD when the function button is pressed. Note that some of these options are available only for certain shooting modes. Starting at the top left corner of the screen, we'll find the drive mode, the flash mode, the autofocus mode, the autofocus area, the lock on AF feature, smile shutter and face detection, auto object framing, the ISO options, the metering modes, the flash compensation, the white balance setting, the DRO and HDR options, 
the creative styles, and the picture effects. Your A58 is also capable of shooting high quality HD video. When you record movies with your A58, you have the same control over the depth of field and overall exposure as you would when you're shooting still images. Also note that you can record movies in any of the camera shooting modes. When you're using a scene mode or picture effect, the characteristics of those settings will be applied to your movie. You can make adjustments to many of the camera's settings prior to recording a movie. Here are the specific shooting settings that you can make adjustments to for both still picture taking and movie recording. ISO, white balance, creative style, exposure compensation, autofocus area, metering mode, face detection, lock on AF, dynamic range optimizer, lens compensation settings, and picture effect. It's helpful to understand a little about movie resolution and movie file formats before you start shooting movies. The movie recording options are located in the camera's movie shooting menu. There are two different movie recording formats to choose from, AVCHD and MP4. The AVCHD format records movies in full HD resolution, 1920 by 1080. You'll want to choose this format to record the highest resolution movies possible with your camera. AVCHD is an advanced video format ideal for archiving your video and burning to discs. The other file format, MP4, is a good format to choose if you're going to be using the movie files for posting online or viewing on your computer. Recording a movie with this camera is easy. Simply press the shutter button halfway down to focus, then press the movie record button to begin recording, and press it again to stop recording. To refocus during movie recording, you can press the shutter button halfway down again. When shooting movies, use an SD Speed Class 10 memory card or higher. If a slower memory card is used, the movie may not be properly recorded. To view a movie that you recorded, press the playback button. Then press the thumbnail zoom out button. Use the left side of the control button to navigate to the left bar and press the center control button. Still image files, AVCHD files, and MP4 files are located in separate folders within the playback view. So you'll need to select the appropriate folder. Here you can scroll to the movie you'd like to play and press the center control button to play the movie on the LCD. There are a few additional things that you should know about recording movies with your A58. If you'd like to control the aperture and shutter speed in your movies, you can use the movie mode. Rotate the mode dial to the movie mode icon. When the camera body and lens are set to autofocus, the camera will continuously focus automatically. Also, when the autofocus is active, you'll only be able to use the programmed auto mode in the movie mode. To make adjustments to the overall brightness of the movie, press and hold the exposure compensation button while rotating the control dial. When the autofocus mode is set to local, you can change the focus area during movie recording. We'll discuss autofocus areas later in this guide. If you'd like to have specific control over the aperture and shutter speed with the manual modes, you'll need to switch the AF switches on the camera body and lens to manual focus. Now press the function button and use the control button to navigate to the movie shooting mode. Here you can choose from program auto, aperture priority, shutter priority, and manual mode. Just as in still image shooting, you can use the control dial to make adjustments to the aperture and shutter speed. Adjust the focus with the focus ring on the lens. The autofocus area where the image is in focus will turn green. Now simply press the movie record button to begin recording. Press it again to end recording. To record sound during movie recording, the A58 has a built-in microphone which will record sound automatically by default. Take great care not to cover the microphone during movie recording. If you'd like to turn off sound recording, you can do this through the camera's menu system. In the movie shooting menu, navigate to audio recording. Here you can select either on or off. As we've discussed, the Sony A58 has a large LCD monitor 
where you can review images, adjust menu settings, and adjust shooting settings. Let's discuss the camera's playback options and displays now. To enter playback, simply press the playback button. The most recently recorded image or movie will be displayed on the LCD. You can use the sides of the control button to scroll through the image or movie files in that folder. To view additional files, press the zoom out thumbnail button. Press the left side of the control button to navigate to the bar on the left side of the screen. And press the center control button to view the other folder options. Still image files and movies are stored in folders. You can choose to view the still image files, the MP4 movie files, or the AVCHD movie files. You can use the control button to scroll through the image thumbnails. To view an image full screen on the LCD, press the center control button. You can also magnify images on the LCD monitor. This is especially useful when you want to check for good focus in detail areas of the photo. Press the zoom in button to see the desired level of detail in the photo. You can also press the zoom out button once or multiple times to view a larger area of the image. Then you can use the top, bottom, and sides of the control button to scroll to the desired area of the photo. As you're scrolling through photos in the camera's playback, you may find some images that you'd like to protect from being accidentally erased. To protect images, enter the camera's first playback menu and choose Protect. Here, choose Multiple Images. Now, all you need to do is scroll through the photos on the memory card. When you see an image that you'd like to protect, press the center control button to select the image. You can then continue scrolling through the images and use the center control button to select any others that you'd like to protect. Then press the menu button to protect the images. Select OK and press the center control button again. Now, images that have been protected will have a small key icon displayed at the top of the screen. If you find a photo that didn't turn out, you can delete it from your memory card by pressing the delete button. When the delete dialog appears, select delete and the image will be removed from the memory card. Note that once an image is erased, it cannot be recovered. Another feature that is available in the camera's image playback is image rotation. To rotate an image, press the function button. Now you can press the center control button to rotate the image. Each time the center control button is pressed, the image will be rotated 90 degrees. Press the function button to resume normal playback. The A58 has different playback displays that will each display different information about the image. Pressing the playback button will take you to the default playback, where many important settings are displayed. At the top left corner, you'll see the memory card and folder icon. Next, there is the folder number and file number. This shows the aspect ratio, image size and quality, on the top right corner, you'll see the battery indicator. At the bottom of the screen, there is the date that the image was recorded, the time the image was recorded, and the file number out of the total number of images. Also at the bottom of the screen are shooting settings that were used to record the image, including the shutter speed, aperture, and ISO setting. Pressing the display button will bring up the histogram display. Here you will see the same information at the top and bottom of the screen that was in the previous display. In addition to that information, you will see the shooting mode, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, exposure compensation, metering mode, focal length, creative style, white balance, and dynamic range optimizer setting. If there are areas of the image that are too bright and lost detail, those areas in the image will blink in black. If there are areas that are too dark and have lost detail, those areas will blink in white. On the right side of the screen, you will see the histogram for the whole image, the top histogram, as well as the histograms for each of the color channel. The histogram gives you a basic idea of the tone distribution of the image. If the histogram is shifted to the left side of the graph, the image will probably be dark or underexposed. If the histogram is shifted to the right side of the graph, the image will be too bright or overexposed. In most cases, a properly exposed photo will have the data distributed over the whole graph. The final playback screen can be shown by pressing the display button again. This view is simply a full screen image.
AF is especially useful for faces. If the face that is being tracked leaves the screen and then returns, the camera will resume focusing on that face. Before we begin discussing the camera's autofocus modes and areas, let's set the lock on AF to off. To do this, simply press the function button and navigate to the lock on AF option. Here, rotate the control dial to select off. Now let's discuss the autofocus modes that are available on the A58. Autofocus modes are available only when the AF switches on the camera's body and the lens are set to the AF position. To access the camera's focus modes, make sure the shooting mode is set to PASM, picture effect, or continuous priority. Then press the function button. Here you can use the control button to navigate to the autofocus mode options. You can rotate the control dial or press the center control button to make your selection. You can choose from AFS or single shot AF, AFA or automatic AF, and AFC or continuous AF. When you're choosing the focus mode, the main thing you'll want to think about is whether or not the subject is in motion. With all of the focus modes, you can focus by pressing the shutter button halfway down or by pressing the AF button. When focus is achieved, the AF point that achieved focus will flash in green and the focus indicator will appear at the bottom left corner of the LCD. The first focus mode is AFS or single shot AF and is best suited for stationary subjects. Choose this mode when you're photographing objects or when you're doing portrait work with an older child or adult. The AFC or continuous AF mode is best for shooting moving subjects and is for use when focusing distance keeps changing. Use this mode when you're photographing sporting events, small children or animals. While you hold the shutter button halfway down, the subject will be continuously focused. The third autofocus mode is automatic AF. In this mode, the focus mode automatically switches from single shot AF to continuous AF if the still subject starts moving. Your camera also has a manual focus option that can be used at times when it's difficult to get proper focus using autofocus methods. In addition to the camera's autofocus modes, you'll also want to be familiar with the autofocus areas. The autofocus areas can be changed when the camera is set to the PASM, picture effect, continuous priority, or sweep panorama shooting modes. To select an autofocus area, press the function button and navigate to the AF area setting. Rotate the control dial to make your selection. The first option is wide. In this mode, the camera will automatically select which of the 15 AF points to use for focus. Next, there is zone. With this option, you will simply select one of three zones of focus areas and the camera will automatically select the focus area from that zone. To select the zone, simply press the AF button and use the right and left sides of the control button to choose the zone. Then press the center control button to confirm. The next focus area option is spot. When this option is selected, the camera will exclusively use the center AF point for focus. The last option is local. With the local option, you can select the exact focus point you'd like the camera to use. The subject that is within the focus point that you have selected will be in focus. To select a focus point, make sure that the autofocus area is set to local and press the AF button. Now you can choose the AF point with either the control button or the control dial. When you've made your selection, press the shutter button halfway to resume picture taking. The Sony A58 has unique features called smile shutter and face detection that will help you capture photos of people in sharp focus. These features can be accessed by pressing the function button and using the control buttons to select smile face detection. The first option is face detection off, which will disable this feature. Next, there is face detection registered faces, which will give priority for focusing to faces that you have registered. To register a face, enter the camera's menu system and navigate to the fourth custom menu. Here, select Face Registration, select New Registration, 
Now, fill the white frame with the face you'd like to register and press the shutter button completely to take the picture. When prompted, select Enter. Now that face will be given priority when you're using face detection with registered faces. The next option for Smile Shutter face detection setting is Face Detection On. With this option, the camera will detect and focus on faces that are in the scene. The last option is Smile Shutter, with three options for the level of smile you'd like to be detected. When enabled, Smile Shutter will recognize a smiling face and take the picture all without you pressing the shutter button. Let's talk about some other considerations when you're trying to take crisp and sharp images. Sometimes a photo may have poor focus, but it's not related to the camera's focus mode or focus area mode. Camera shake happens when the camera moves while the shutter is open. This exposes the image sensor while the camera is moving and results in blurry images. Always try to steady the camera. Holding it with two hands and pressing the viewfinder gently against your face will help. You can also lean against something or use a tripod, a monopod, or even a beanbag to steady your camera. You can also reduce the effect of camera shake by selecting a fast shutter speed. This reduces the amount of time the image sensor is exposed to shaky conditions. A helpful rule of thumb is to set your shutter speed to one over the focal length. Confusing? Let me explain. If the focal length of your lens is 300 millimeters, for example, you should set your shutter speed to at least 1 300th of a second. If the focal length is 30 millimeters, you might get by by using a shutter speed as low as 1 30th of a second. Let's take a look at the A58's sophisticated menu system. Depending on the shooting mode you're using, different menu items will appear. We will be showing the menu items that are available when the camera's shooting mode is set to manual. Many of these settings are discussed in greater detail in other chapters of this guide. We'll just look at an overview of the menu items in this chapter. The first menu is the recording menu, indicated by the camera icon. It has three sub-menus, indicated by the numbers to the right of the icon. In the first recording menu, the first item is image size, followed by image aspect ratio. You can change the aspect ratio to either 3.2 or 16.9. If you're planning on making standard 4x6 prints of your images, you'll want to keep the aspect ratio at 3.2. Next, there is the image quality setting followed by the panorama size and direction options for the sweep panorama mode. The second recording menu begins with the clear image zoom and digital zoom options, which will allow you to digitally zoom in on images beyond the zooming capability of the lens. With clear image zoom, the high quality image process that is used will give higher priority to image quality when zooming images. With digital zoom, higher priority will be given to magnification. Next, there is long exposure noise reduction, which allows you to select the noise reduction for shots with very slow shutter speeds. Next, there is high ISO noise reduction, which will allow you to select the level of noise reduction for images shot with high ISO settings. The next menu item is flash control. Here you can choose the method for determining the intensity of the flash output. The ADI flash option provides accurate flash compensation with virtually no effect from the reflection off the subject. The pre-flash TTL method uses data only from pre-flash metering to determine the amount of light to output. The next menu item is AF Illuminator, which can be set to auto or off. When it's set to auto, the AF Illuminator will provide light for a dimly lit subject to aid focusing. The third recording menu begins with the Steady Shot option. Sony Steady Shot can reduce the effect of camera shake in images with slow shutter speeds. Next, there is the color space setting with two options, sRGB and Adobe RGB. Some photographers prefer the sRGB mode as it requires less processing later. Other photographers prefer the Adobe RGB mode as this mode has a wider range of colors, making it a preferred option for images that will be extensively processed on the computer. 
The next menu item is AEL with shutter. With this option, you can choose whether or not you would like the exposure settings to be locked when the shutter button is pressed halfway. The last item in the third recording menu is the shooting tip list, which contains many helpful tips for using the camera in a variety of shooting scenarios. The next menu is the movie shooting menu, which begins with the movie file format option. You can choose from AVCHD or MP4. The record setting is where you can select the size of the recorded movie frame. Depending on whether you have selected AVCHD or MP4, the record setting options will vary. The next menu item is SteadyShot. When enabled, SteadyShot will help you get crisp images even at slow shutter speeds. Next, there is the AF tracking duration. With this option, you can choose how long you'd like the camera to continue to track focus in the movie mode. Next, there is audio recording, where you can choose whether or not to have the camera's microphone record sound. The wind noise reduction option will reduce wind noise during movie recording. Now let's take a look at the custom menu, which includes four submenus. The first item in the first menu is the I Start AF, which sets whether or not to use the autofocus when you look through the viewfinder. Next, there is the Finder LCD setting, which determines the method for switching between the viewfinder and LCD. Next, there is Red Eye Reduction. When enabled, the Red Eye Reduction feature will reduce the appearance of red eyes in images of people or animals when the flash is used. The Release Without Lens option sets whether the shutter can open without a lens attached. The last two menu items, Superior Auto Continuous Shooting and Superior Auto Image Extract, allow you to choose whether or not the camera will shoot continuously in Superior Auto mode or whether or not to save all of the images that were taken in the Superior Auto Continuous Shooting. The second custom menu begins with the grid line setting, which allows you to select the type of composition grid that can be displayed over the image while shooting. You can choose from rule of thirds, square, or diagonal plus square. You can also choose to have the grid disabled. The auto review setting allows you to choose how long you'd like images to be automatically displayed on the LCD after being taken. The next two menu items, Display Button Monitor and Display Button Finder, allow you to choose what information is visible on both the LCD monitor and in the electronic viewfinder. The Peaking Level setting will enhance the outline of in-focus ranges with a specific color. You can choose from High, Mid, Low, or Off. The Peaking Color sets the color that will be used for the peaking function. The Live View Display option sets whether or not to display the effect of a function on the screen, such as the effect of exposure compensation. The third custom menu begins with the function of AEL button setting, which allows you to set a custom function to the AEL button. Next, there is the ISO button option, which will allow you to choose the function of the ISO button. The next two menu items, Preview button and Focus Hold button, will allow you to select functions for these buttons. The Movie Button option will allow you to choose whether to have the Movie Recording button enabled in all shooting modes or only in the Movie mode. The fourth custom menu begins with the Lens Compensation options for shading, chromatic aberration, and distortion. These menu items will allow you to choose to have the correction for these items set to either Auto or Off. The E Front Curtain Shutter menu item allows you to set whether or not to use the electronic front curtain shutter function. The Face Registration option allows you to register or change the person's face that will be the priority in focus. Now let's look at the playback menus. The first menu is Still Movie Select, which allows you to choose the folder for image or movie playback. The next menu item is Delete, which allows you to delete multiple images at once or all images in a specific folder. The Slideshow option will play a slideshow of the images on the memory card. 
The image index option will allow you to choose whether you'd like to view four or nine image thumbnails. The protect menu item allows you to protect images from accidental deletion and the Specify Printing option will allow you to choose the way that images are printed when the camera is connected to a compatible printer. The second playback menu has two menu items. First, there is the Volume Settings menu option, which allows you to choose the volume setting for movie playback. Next, there is the Playback Display option, which determines whether vertical images will be rotated on the LCD during playback. Now let's look at the memory card tool menu. The first menu item allows you to format the memory card. Next, you can choose the way that the camera assigns the file numbers to the image and movie files. The folder name will allow you to choose the folder format. And the select recording folder option allows you to change the folder where recorded images are stored on the memory card. With the new folder option, you can create a new folder to store images and movies on the memory card. The Recover Image DB setting will recover the image database file for movies and still images to enable recording and playback. The last menu item in the memory card tool menu is the Display Card Space setting. This option shows you how many images and how many minutes of movie can be recorded with the current settings and the space available on the memory card. The clock setup menu is next. There are two menu items here, date, time setup, and area setting. To set the date and time, press the center control button and use the top and bottom of the control button to adjust the settings. Use the sides of the control button to navigate between each section and press the center control button to confirm the settings. The area setting will allow you to choose the time zone. The final menu is the Setup menu with three sub-menus. The first item, Menu Start, determines which menu item will be displayed, whether it is the top menu item or the menu item that was previously selected. Next, there is the Mode Dial Guide, which will allow you to enable or disable the guide that is shown on the LCD when the mode dial is rotated. The next two menu items allow you to choose the brightness for both the LCD and the viewfinder. Viewfinder color temperature will allow you to adjust the color temperature of the electronic viewfinder. Next, there is the power save, which will allow you to choose the level of battery power saving you'd like to enable. With this feature, if the camera is not operated for a period of time, the LCD brightness will dim. The power saving start time option determines how long the camera should wait before going into power save mode. The second setup menu begins with HDMI resolution, which will allow you to set the resolution when the camera is connected to an HDMI TV. Control for HDMI will allow you to operate the camera from a TV using an HDMI cable. The next two options, USB connection setting and USB LUN setting, will allow you to choose how a computer will recognize the camera when it's connected with a USB cable. The next option is audio signals, which determines whether or not the beep sound is used when focus is achieved or when the self-timer is working. The third setup menu begins with the version menu item, which will display the version of camera software installed. Language allows you to choose the language that is used for menus and other settings. The cleaning mode option will allow you to automatically clean the image sensor. Next, there is demo mode which can be used to set the demonstration of movie playback to on or off and the initialize menu item will restore the camera settings to factory default. The Sony A58 includes many features that will allow you to fine-tune and enhance the color and tone of your images as well as apply creative effects. In this chapter, we'll discuss white balance, picture effects, dynamic range optimization, and creative styles.
let's discuss white balance. It's important to understand that the quality of your pictures is affected by the color of surrounding light and how the camera's electronics process that light. Compensating for varying light conditions is referred to as setting the white balance. Most light looks white to an untrained eye, but it can be composed of a range of different colors. The color of sunlight is different in daylight, in the shade, or in cloudy conditions. Daylight, for example, is fairly blue, and fluorescent light is fairly green. If your camera is set to shoot in daylight, but you're shooting in a setting with fluorescent light, your image will look overly red. Proper camera white balance takes into account the color temperature of a light source, which refers to the relative warmth or coolness of white light. Human eyes are very good at judging what is white under different light sources. However, digital cameras often have great difficulty determining auto white balance, or AWB. Incorrect white balance can create unattractive blue, orange, or even green colors in your photos. The white balance scale is expressed in measurements of Kelvin. The higher color temperatures measured in the area of 5600 Kelvin to 7500 Kelvin represent situations like a sunlit or cloudy day. These shooting situations have a greater amount of blue tones and a lesser amount of red tones. Lower color temperature situations are measured in the area of 3200 Kelvin down to 1900 Kelvin and are found in lighting situations like standard lighting from a tungsten light bulb or candle light. These types of shooting situations are found on the lower end of the spectrum and produce greater amounts of red tones and lesser amounts of blue tones. Setting your white balance will help your pictures have the proper coloring. If natural looking colors cannot be obtained with auto white balance, you might choose from one of the other white balance settings to match your light source. In the automatic modes, the white balance will be set automatically. There are two ways to access the white balance settings. The easiest way is to simply press the white balance button. The other way to access the white balance settings is by pressing the function button and then navigating to the white balance setting. Here you can change the white balance setting and see the effects of each setting on your screen. A benefit of the A58 is that it allows for fine tuning of white balance within each white balance setting. The first and default setting is auto white balance. Auto white balance will automatically adjust the color temperature setting. The next white balance setting is daylight. Daylight is a great setting for taking pictures in sunlight. This setting is marked with a sun icon. Use the shade setting when you're taking pictures in the shade. It reduces the bluish tones in a picture. This setting is marked with an icon of a house with shade. Use the cloudy setting when taking pictures on days that are overcast. This is marked with a cloud icon. The incandescent setting is used when taking pictures under common light bulbs. It reduces the reddish tones in a picture. This setting is marked with a light bulb icon. The A58 has four different fluorescent light settings that can be used when shooting under different colors of fluorescent light that are common today. You can choose from warm white, cool white, day white, and daylight. The next setting is the flash setting. Select this setting when you're using the built-in or an external flash unit. The color temperature setting will allow you to select the specific color temperature of the light that you're shooting under. The next icon is the custom white balance option. Select this option when you want to select a custom white balance setting that you have already registered. The last icon is the custom white balance setup option, which is used to create the custom white balance setting specific to the lighting conditions that you're shooting in. This is done by taking a picture of a white card or object and then selecting the image for the camera's electronics to reference. To set a custom white balance, press the white balance button navigate to the custom white balance setup option and press the center control button. Make sure the white or gray object fills the small circle at the center of the frame and press the shutter button to take the white balance reading. The camera will display the color temperature reading. Press the center control button to resume picture taking. Creative styles are another useful feature on the A58. Creative styles are an intuitive way for you to tell the camera what levels of sharpness, contrast, saturation, and color tone you'd like for your specific shooting scenario. The camera has six different preset creative styles, and you can make adjustments to settings in each of them. 
To access the Creative Styles, press the Function button and use the Control button to navigate to the Creative Style option. Press the Center Control button to view the settings. First, there is the Standard Creative Style. This is a good general use picture style. The camera will automatically adjust color tone to fit the scene you're photographing. Images taken with this creative style will appear sharp, vivid, and crisp. The vivid creative style will record images with great saturation and sharpening. Use this creative style for striking images of flowers, greenery, and ocean views. The portrait creative style is great for portraits, especially close-ups. It offers pleasant skin tones and makes the image appear a little softer. The landscape creative style is good for taking pictures of scenery outdoors. This picture style makes the greens and blues of the image more vivid. The sunset creative style beautifully captures the red tones of the setting sun. The black and white creative style will capture images with smooth black and white gradation. Images taken in this setting cannot be converted to color later. All of these creative styles are fully customizable. You can make changes to the contrast, saturation, and sharpness. We'll select one that we'd like to edit and simply press the right side of the control button to view the options. To adjust one of the parameters, use the control button to scroll to that setting, then press the top or bottom of the control button to make the adjustments. When you're finished, press the center control button to resume picture taking. Your Sony A58 also has picture effects, which are a great way to add creativity to your images. There are two ways to access the camera's picture effects. First, you can rotate the mode dial to picture effects. Then press the center control button to view the options. The other way to access the picture effects is by pressing the function button and navigating to the picture effect option. Let's take a look at each of the picture effects now. The toy camera picture effect will mimic the look of a toy camera photo with shaded corners and pronounced colors. Within the toy camera effect, you can press the sides of the control button to choose from normal, cool, warm, green, and magenta effects. The pop color picture effect will create a vivid look that emphasizes the colors in the image. The posterization effects will give your images a high contrast, abstract look by emphasizing either the primary colors or black and white tones depending on the settings that you select. Retro Photo will make your images look aged with sepia color tones and faded contrast. The Soft High Key Picture Effect will create the look of an old photo with soft colors and reduced contrast. There are also four different partial color picture effects for red, green, blue, and yellow. These picture effects create images that retain the respective color of the effect, but the other colors in the image are converted to black and white. High contrast monochrome will create high contrast black and white images. The soft focus picture effect will create images with a soft lighting effect. You can set the intensity of the effect to mid, high, or low. The HDR painting will take three high-speed shots and combine them to create the look of a painting with enhanced colors and details. Again, you can choose from three levels of intensity. The rich tone monochrome effect will take three high-speed shots and combine them to create black and white images with rich gradation and details. The miniature effect will enhance the subject and considerably blur the background. You can use the sides of the control button to choose the area of the frame that will be in focus. You can choose from auto, top, middle horizontal, bottom, right, middle vertical, or left. This effect is best used from above. You can use the sides of the control button to select the area of the frame that you'd like to be in focus. Keep in mind that many of the picture effects will work for both still image capture and movie recording. Your A58 has two great features that will help you retain amazing shadow and highlight details, even in backlight or high contrast lighting, Auto HDR and DRO, or Dynamic Range Optimizer. Let's take a minute to learn about these features, starting with HDR. 
HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. It's a technique that is used in photography to create captivating photos of dramatically lit subjects. The HDR effect is created when three differently exposed images are combined to create a single photo that shows a super realistic range of shadows and highlights. Here's how to configure the camera to use the Auto HDR setting. First, make sure that the shooting mode is set to P, A, S, or M. Also note that the ISO setting cannot be set to the multi-frame noise reduction option. Now press the function button and navigate to the DRO Auto HDR setting. Here use the control button to highlight Auto HDR. Press the sides of the control button to adjust the level of variation you'd like in the exposure between the shots that will be used to create the HDR image. If you choose Auto, the camera will automatically determine the level of variation between the shots. If you choose 1EV, the variation between each shot will be one exposure step. You can choose to have the level of variation between 1EV and 6EV. After you've made your selection, press the shutter button halfway to focus and the rest of the way to take the picture. Since the camera will be taking three shots at very high speed, it's important to make sure that you keep the camera as steady as possible while the pictures are being taken. After the images are combined, two images will be recorded on the camera's memory card. The first image will have the proper exposure and the second will be the final HDR image. Now let's talk about the Dynamic Range Optimizer or DRO. This setting is similar to the Auto HDR as it captures the rich natural shadows and highlight details in the high contrast lighting but it differs from Auto HDR in that it captures just one image, so it can be used with moving subjects and can be used in continuous shooting. The DRO setting is available when the camera's shooting mode is set to PASM or telezoom modes and it's accessed under the same function option as Auto HDR. Again, just press the function button, then scroll to the DRO Auto HDR option. Select the DRO Auto option. Here you can use the sides of the control button to adjust the level of optimization you'd like. The higher the number, the more shadows and highlights will be recovered in an image. Now simply take the picture. The Sony A58 has a unique feature that will automatically crop an image after it has been taken. This feature is called Auto Object Framing and it's useful for portraits and some macro photography. With auto object framing, the camera will record the original image as well as a version that has been cropped to bring the emphasis to the primary subject in the frame. To use auto object framing, press the function button and then use the control buttons to select the auto object framing option. Here, select auto. Now, frame the image as you normally would and take the picture. If the camera applies an auto framing crop to the image, you will see a brief crop overlay shown on the LCD during image review. To view the cropped and original versions of the image, press the playback button. Your A58 has a powerful built-in flash that can provide you with extra light in certain shooting scenarios. The effective range of the built-in flash is between 3 and 30 feet, depending on the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Note that the flash will not fire in some shooting modes, and that some flash modes are available only in certain shooting modes. To access the flash modes, press the function button, and use the control button to navigate to the flash options. Here you can use the control dial to scroll through the flash mode options and select the one you'd like. There are five different flash modes and many of them are available only in certain shooting modes. Let's talk about each of them now. First there is the flash off mode. When this mode is selected the flash will not fire even if the flash is raised. Use the flash off mode when you do not want the flash to fire regardless of lighting. The next flash mode is the auto flash mode. With this mode, the camera will automatically evaluate the lighting conditions and fire to provide the correct amount of light. Next, there is the fill flash mode. 
which will fire every time a picture is taken regardless of lighting. Use this for situations when there is plenty of light but you'd like the subject to be lit with the flash. Next is the slow sync flash mode. This is a good mode to use when you're photographing a subject at night and you'd like both the background and the subject to be properly exposed. The next flash mode is rear sync. In this mode, the flash will fire just before the shutter closes, creating a trailing image of the movement of the subject. The last flash mode is wireless, which is used to fire an optional external flash unit. If the image is too bright or too dark, you can use flash exposure compensation to make adjustments. To adjust the flash compensation, press the function button and navigate to flash compensation. Use the control dial to adjust the level of flash compensation you'd like. Numbers with plus signs will increase the brightness of the flash and numbers with minus signs will decrease the brightness of the flash. We hope you've enjoyed learning more about your Sony Alpha 58. We know this new information will give you enough confidence and know-how to take your photography skills to new levels. Remember, you can refer back to any section of this guide at any time. Just select the topics you want to review from the main menu or table of contents. Watch for more Quick Pro guides on newly released cameras. Thanks for watching.